Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses the duties and practices of a Muslim in accordance with the rulings by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life. I am Mohsin Shah and joining me is Sheikh Ali Maar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you, Sheikhna? How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, last time we were discussing uh, you know, the places uh, where a Muslim can pray and cannot pray. Uh, we went through quite a lot on the criteria and, and what makes your salah batil if you pray in these areas. I wanted to ask you in regards to the opposite gender because we mainly focused on males but when males and females come together and they have to pray is it acceptable for a, a sister to pray uh, very close uh, to a male? A'udhu billahi as-sami'an alim minash shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammadin With regard to the praying of a female uh, close to a male in the prayers. Now, we have two scenarios. The first scenario, if it's um, the salah is prayed um, separately, not with the, with the jama'ah. In other words, furada. So you prayed separately alone. Uh, and then you have the second scenario, which is the salat al jama'ah. We begin with the second scenario. There's no way that a woman can pray in front of a man or a group of, group of men um, in the Salat al Jama'ah. So the ladies should go back and pray behind the men. They can't be, let's say, in the first line of the Salat al Jama'ah, all female, and the second and third are male. That's not allowed. So with the Salat al Jama'ah, there's no way that she can go and pray in front of the men. With regard to the Furada Salah and praying alone, so let's say that a husband and a wife, a, a sister and a brother, um, or, or a sister and her father, they want to pray in one room, let's say, and close to each other. What is the hukum? With regard to this, this hukum um, and rule, uh, ulama have said that some ulama that if a male prays next to a female be it a close relative or even strangers the salah will be batal for both okay. to pray next to each other salah will be batal and void and there must be at least roughly five meters distance it's almost 16 foot uh, distance so they can pray parallel or even the uh, female can uh, pray ahead of the men um, but with this distance otherwise they can't pray next to each other that's the opinion of the ulama or some of the ulama however Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi he states in his risala that you are allowed to pray next to a female if you're a male or vice versa uh, and it's not wajib that you distance yourself from uh, uh, the female or, again, vice versa. But it is makruh that a man um, prays uh, next to a woman or the woman is ahead in the front of the man, just a few, let's say, a few inches, for example. That's makruh, but for the Sayyid, he says, it won't make the salah batal and void. You can pray, so let's say um, there's a small room, husband and wife, they both uh, stand next to each other and they perform the salah, again, uh, furada, uh, separate, you know, in jama'ah, and they begin together, reading the surah and, and alhamd and so forth. So they can, they can actually commence the salah next to each other, but with karaha and uh, dislike. But as I've said, other ulama might say also that this is, uh, causes the salah to be batil. So the one goes back to his marja and he checks. Otherwise, the Sayyid allows it, but with uh, being makruh and dislike. Ahsan, Thank you very much, Sheikh. Sheikh, what about um, places where it's mustahab to pray salah? Can, can we do, I mean, does the, the Sayyid actually discuss 
uh, and, and recommend for us to go to pray Salah in these places? Of course, the Sayyid mentions uh, four main uh, places that is mustahab to go and perform the Salah. So he begins with uh, praying in the mosque of Al Masjid Al Haram in Mecca, where the Kaaba is. So that is the first place to pray there. And followed by the Masjid of Al Nabi Sallallahu in Medina. And there is actually a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu with regard to praying in, in, his, in his mosque in Medina. He said, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, As Salatu fi Masjidi. Praying in the mosque of the Prophet in Medina is compared to 50,000 50, of salah. So imagine if you pray two rak'ah of salat subuh outside uh, Medina, let's say in London, you pray in two rak'ah, but if you pray them in the mosque of the Medina of the Prophet, you get 50,000 rewards 50, of praying uh, those two rak'ah. So huge, huge thawab and reward. Also, the third mosque is Masjid Al Kufa in Iraq, yeah. just close to Najaf city, and then Masjid Al Aqsa, the okay, Masjid of Bayt Al Maqdis in Jerusalem. Yes. That's the fourth uh, main mosque that is mustahab to pray there as well. And then the Sayyid says the Grand Mosque of every city. Mm -hmm. So you begin to go to, for example, the mosques of uh, the main uh, in, in a city, let's say in, in, in London, you have the, the Grand Mosque, or in Birmingham, for example, in Manchester, for example. And of course, uh, the local mosques as well, and even the market mosque. So the, the thawab goes gradually down to these uh, different types of mosques. MashaAllah, Ahsan Sheikh, that's very, very inspiring. but. What about uh, the holy shrines of the Ahl al-Bayt? What about Karbala and Najaf? Um, does, does the Sayyid not mention anything there? Then the Sayyid goes and um, brings and details the reward for praying in these uh, shrines. He says the Salah and the praying in the Haram of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, the commander of the faithful alayhi is equal to 200,000 Salah. Gosh, Imagine uh, two hundred thousand exactly. So we had fifty thousand exactly in, in Mecca and Medina. In Medina, yes. Medina, and now we've got two hundred thousand exactly in, in Najaf. Exactly. Mashallah. And then he mentions that every rak'ah of salah at the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala, every rak'ah, not the whole mm -hmm. salah. So the salat al is four rak'ah. Yes. So every rak'ah at the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is equal to the freeing of 1,000 slaves. Mashallah, and equals to 1,000 Hajj and 1,000 of Umrah. Imagine. Oof. Great thawab. So imagine how the rewards of praying in these such places. And don't forget that Karbala land uh, has a, a greater thawab and greater status in the sight of Allah. Yes, than at the other lands. We have narration for that. Yes. So such a great thawab encourages the believer, the mu'min, the one who loves Ahlul Bayt to go there and always visit their graves and perform the prayers there, especially the jama'ah prayer, especially the daily prayers, the wajib prayers, to get those rewards. Because in the Day of Judgment, the one needs hasana wahida. You know, you need Indeed. that. Indeed. One reward in order to elevate you to higher levels of paradise. Asan Sheikh, Asan I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the tawfiq and the ability to visit Abu Abdullah al Hussein to his ziyarah, and inshallah, to pray your salah, inshallah, and to all the viewers as well, inshallah, you get the opportunity to go visit Karbala and, and be able to pray in the holy shrine of Abu Abdullah. Sheikhna, what about for the sisters and for the ladies? Is it encouraged for them as well to go to the mosque and pray? Or is it better for them to stay at home? Well, initially it's preferred for the woman, the mu'min woman, uh, the pious mu'min to uh, stay at home and pray at home. But however, if she observes the hijab well and uh, protects herself from the strangers, then of course it's better for her to go to the mosque 
and perform the prayer inside the mosque, especially with the jama'ah, okay. in which the reward would be much higher and higher. So yeah, I mean, it depends on the hijab. There is good hijab, I mean, observed well, then it's better to go to the mosque. The hijab is poor, then no, let her stay at home and uh, pray at home, which is better. You're saying, uh, you know, if the hijab is not good, she should stay at home. I do believe that there is a ruling in terms of if you live close proximity to the mosque, if you're a neighbor to the mosque. Um, what about in that case then? Should, should she force herself to go to the mosque and pray or should she still stay at home? With regard to the ladies, as I've said, uh, be it a nearby mosque or far away mosque, the hijab is um, the axis which plays, uh, you know, uh, with regard to the ruling of uh, the woman to go out or not to go out. If the hijab is well, then she can go and it's better for her, of course, to attend the jama'ah and pray jama'ah. But with regard to neighboring the mosque in overall, and especially for the men, now we have a hadith which says, on Ali alayhi salam, he says, Salamullahi alayh, la salata lijar al masjid illa fil masjid. The Imam Salamullah alayhi says, uh, the salah won't be that highly rewarded um, unless the one prays it inside the mosque, the one who is close and neighbors at the mosque. Mm -hmm. So it's better for him to go and pray inside uh, the, uh, the mosque. But the Imam mentions the conditions and exceptions. He says, Unless he has an excuse, he can't go out. You know, there are kids to take care of, for example. Or uh, that person has an illness, paralyzed, disabled, for example. Yes. In this case, yeah, that's fine. Otherwise, it's better, more encouraged, more rewarding for this person to go and pray inside the mosque rather than staying at home and praying at home. Last salat, it doesn't mean the salah will be not accepted or batil. No. The reward will be less if you praise at home and there's no excuse, no issues with So if we person. relate this hadith to the sisters, should they should they go to the mosque then if they live close? Of course, if they if they live close and they observe the hijab well, well it's better, as the uh, the Sayyid mentions mm -hmm. in the previous mas'ala, that's better for them to go and pray, even the jama'ah as well. Yes, of course. Mashallah. Yes, Mashallah. definitely. And also the hadith continues. I didn't mention uh, all of the hadith. Then someone asks the Imam alayhi salam, فَقِيلَ وَمَنْ جَارُ الْمَسْجِدِ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ O Commander of the Faithful, who is uh, the neighboring to the mosque? Who is the neighbor of the mosque? The Imam says, مَنْ سَمِعَ nida." Whoever listens to the adhan, to the nida of the adhan, to the call of the prayer. So in that time, well, they didn't have loudspeakers. So the Mu'adhan goes on the minara and he says, Allahu Akbar, and he does the adhan. So whoever listens around, surrounding the masjid, he's a neighbor of the masjid. But mm -hmm. if somebody is a bit far away and he doesn't hear the adhan, then he's not part of this hadith, which, which means the neighboring of the masjid. But with today's uh, loudspeakers, would they be the same? Again, uh, this hadith was in, was in that time which there were no loudspeakers. So this goes back to the marja, to see if the marja if he says the same applies or not, then that's another issue. Hassan, thank you very much, Sheikh. And I believe we, we would I encourage our brothers and sisters to actually attend the mosque, regardless if you can hear the adhan or not. That's all we have time for, Sheikh. So thank you very much for uh, your uh, involvement. And thank you very much for answering my questions today. And thank you for all the viewers at home for joining us on Ihqam SOS. And inshallah, you now know that you'll be able to go to any mosque and that you'll be gaining more reward for your salah and inshallah remember us in your dua and inshallah we'll be seeing you in Karbala inshallah under the dome of Aba Abdul Al Hussein. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.